Anyway, Brontus Purnell, you had a residency here at the Tom House? Yes. Right? Yes. Um, filmmaker? Yes. Dancer? Yes. Writer? I write. Um, anything else we need to know? I'm a performance artist. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I can cook. Okay. Well, that's kind of an art form, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. So, tell us about your time here at the Tom House. Um, I came in for a month. I was, I went back home. I'm originally from Alabama, so I was back yeah. home in Alabama for a month, just doing a bunch of family business, and I came directly here, and it was like a crazy shift, you know. Um, I was working on edits for my new book, 100 Boyfriends, yep. and for an, a community engagement night, I did a non-seance that involved, um... I don't know, installation, movement, performance, spoken word. Yeah, I, I, was, voice. I was a part of that. Thank you yes. for inviting me. That was cool. I, I think I mentioned that I'm a terrible performer. I was awful. <laughs> but what I did tell you, I can moon people. And you're like, and I said, I can draw. I said, yeah, we need somebody to draw. So that was really lovely. What was the impetus of the seance? Was that, uh, did that start here at the Tom House, the idea? Or was it something you've been working on? Um... There's, there's been a lot of, um, I think, talk in a lot of performance circles I'm in that deal with just, like, um, ancestors and kind of, like, the relationality of space okay. between, like, us and them and um, do, do we talk to these spirits? Do these spirits talk to us? How do they talk to us? I personally am not so much, like, one of those, like, kind of for real woo-woo, like, people like that. Like, I feel like... Really I, conjured it up. Like, I have, like, a metaphysical interest in, like, things like that where I'm just, like, <laughs> okay, actually, like, this is this is a person who was, like, this, like, outsider gay artist. Like, this was their story. This were their beliefs, or this is how they um, attended to their art practice in a world that was... Sure. Like, hard for them. How do we move through that also? What are we learning from that? Like, are we really just, like, leaves of grass? Where, like, you know, this one idea of this person or this art or this lifestyle just manifests in so many ways. And Yeah, I was thinking about kind of weird stuff like that. And how do you, um, how do you position yourself in a space, you know? And, like, where would, where would a ghost haunt, too? Like, is it just at a house that you spend a lot of time at? Is it at the morgue? Where or is it like, within you? Or is it, yeah, like... The it is within you, yeah. Yeah, like, yeah, the relationality of space and, um... I don't know, how, how do we conjure these things up and these feelings up and kind of things the spirit of this person did yeah. and secured for you without sure, you knowing sure. it. I know that Ed Mock is somebody very special to you, right? Yeah. Was, was that... Was that also taking place, kind of conjuring that up, or is that one of many ghosts, if you will, from your life? That was that was something. It was kind of like, it was kind of like that. I had a dance, um, kind of a dance mentor, you could say, um, Amara Tabor Smith, and she actually danced with him in the eighties okay. as a teenager, and she did this public performance piece, like a five-hour piece dedicated to him that moved throughout the city, um, called "He Walks Swiftly but Gently," and it was about like. We, we would, like, take over, like, his, like, favorite restaurant, or there would be spaces... And this is in the Bay Area. This is in the Bay Area. There were, like, spaces of him, his where he, like, would dance that are now, like, bars or piano spaces, but she, like, asked if she could do the performances, like, the different places he existed sure. within the city, even though over the course of, like, 30 years now, the city has changed so much. Of what course. It, yeah, but, like, does that energy still reside once you, like, put it there? Like, once you dance in a place, do you get to keep that energy there forever? And yeah, and it's, you, special, it's reinforced if you come back to that place and conjure up the spirits or do some sort of performative thing, right? Yeah, totally, <laughs> like, and it's just, yeah, and there's just a lot, there's so many ways to do it, too, like, and that just, I've always came from, like, um, kind of a um, African traditional practice where, like, you talk to spirit through, like, dancing or singing and like you know what I mean just really sure. simple stuff you know what I mean like everyone I think everyone thought that it was going to be like goat's blood and like a pentagram and stuff like that it's like no it's like it's like poetry it's like outlining bodies in space it's like uh, people witnessing that they are together there are things that kind of create these these memories or these trips sure. or experiences cool yeah 
Uh, tell us some of the things that happened here at the Tom House. What were your, some of your favorite things that uh, that you took from the house? And was the goal to do the seance here as part of the residency, or what were some of the goals? That was that was my main goal. That was what the thing I was most concerned with. But also, I was um, I was finishing up like the last edits for my book. I have this book coming out on um, FSG. Do you know FSG? Mm-mm. They you put know out, FSG. You know, call me by your name. Yeah. They put out they put out that book, so they're the ones putting out my next book, One Hundred Boyfriends, okay. and like um, I had um, I had a bunch of just like edits to do before the book finally goes to the editor, and we really hash it up and yeah, make me polished and presentable. <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I know this place is, is sometimes can be very quiet, but it's also a very organic place, and you kind of can flourish here artistically. Uh, that Tom House has been a uh, a place, kind of like a, a meeting place for a lot of queer artists from all over the world. And so they find it very welcoming and also very organic and kind of like an incubator of sorts. Did you find that to be true? I thought it was really fucking rad. I totally, I totally got that feel. Like, there was always some kind of art thing going on. There was always people I didn't know, like... The doors are never, are seemingly almost never locked, but it's like the people that pass through here are so cool that yeah. I didn't like really think about it. And like, plus, like you hear the name like Tom of Finland, and you're like, oh, there's gonna be like ninety German guys in leather like jerking <laughs> off in the room. But you maybe get here. maybe a small <laughs> quantity, but I think it's pretty uh, pretty diverse, you know. No, no. When you get here, it's yeah. just like it's very, it's so, it's like, it's like it's all type of genders, it's all type of people. It's like it's really. It's really cool. It's, like, really, like, um, it still feels really, like, DIY, too, or, like, there's, like, a really, like... For sure. Yeah, yeah like, there's a really, like, homespun spirit to it. And I was really happy. It was, like, being at, like, punk rock gay dorms. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, like, you come here, it's like, I'm thinking of building this. It's, like, okay, let's help you build it, you know? So they're there to kind of facilitate a lot of that. And the Tom House is super well-connected, too, in terms of other creatives to come in and help and, and like, help you with whatever practice you got going on. Um, so, yeah, so, what's next? What What's going on? Um, I'm trying to, um, turn two of my books into movies, and okay. so I'm doing that, and then, um, I'm applying to some PhD programs, because I'm out of ideas, and so it's either <laughs> I can make art and clip weed, or I can just try to go back to school, so. <laughs> well, can you do all the above? It's a lot of work, alright? I'm just like, no, I can't do it all, I hate that. <laughs> It's like when you're like carrying four wheels and someone's like, hey, can you push one with your... <laughs> like, I'm it's like, like, I'm going to try. Like, we'll yeah. make it into a performative thing, right? Performance. 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 I have a theater degree. <laughs> so, uh, why performance and dance? I mean, you know, as opposed to the, the visual arts or, you know. I ask myself that all the time because it's just like, yeah, like performance is so... Damn, it's really the least paid of all. Like, but it also has a lot of moving parts, you know. My, I, you know, because I don't do performance work, and I know, and but I'm a curator. And I've curated performance uh, exhibitions and, and this and that. But it, it's a lot of moving bodies and a lot of moving parts. You have to physically move things around, as opposed to, let's say, somebody that's a painter or an illustrator. They can simply just sit there in their underwear and create works and then present them. I think maybe that's for the shy type. But you're pretty out there when it comes to for performance, correct? No, yeah. Like, and I mean, I'm a, I write. Like, I'm a writer. I just started painting and doing stuff like that because my program at Berkeley, like, kind of for, not forces us into it, but um, like, but coming coming from writing, like, it's an isolationist practice. Yeah. But it's also like I do like get bored with it, and I'm just like really like, how do I make these words? like, exist somewhere else or, like, live on somewhere else. And as cheesy as it sounds, like, dance is, like, just another language. Of and so there's a way... I don't know, you can, like... There's so many trips with, like, theater and space that you can just, like... I don't know, give people another feeling and just, like, here, I'm going to write a, something on a scroll. and <laughs> <laughs> well, Maybe project it. I'm going to project a poem that I wrote. Yeah, before. totally. <laughs> like, but then I'm going to, like, you know... Which would actually be so much fucking easier. Like, sometimes I'll just be like, God, there's like 10 people here and I have to like, 
take control of it. And this is like, I like never top anything. Like, fuck, like, how's this gonna work? Like, <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, maybe that's an idea. You can project something you've written so you're like, that maybe in a performative way, so it's like you're forced to like really pay attention as opposed, did you read that poem I wrote last week? They're like, what poem, girl? I don't know what's up. <laughs> top, top projection. Top projection. Top projection, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I mean, yeah, fuck, I'll try it. I'm down. <laughs> down. I like to try shit. <laughs> hey, so study and contrast, right? Bay Area, LA, or Southern California. What are some of the tidbits that you can, like, what is this contrast of folks, right? Because there's always that that talk about kids from the Bay Area and the kids from Southern California. There's, like, this weird... I think, okay, first of all, I'll say it, like, and I'll say this as a Bay Area person. LA, okay. is, LA is winning right now. LA is Why? definitely Why fucking Because it's just, like, it's it's funner. Like, the, the who you'll meet is, like, more of a toss-up. Like, it used to feel that way in the Bay more, but just, you know, I don't want to get too far into it, but it's, like, it's changed a lot. But then there's also, like, the tropes that exist yep. about both cities, and, like, and you know how they always say, like, L.A. is a superficial place. I think the Bay Area is one of the most super fucking official places on the face of the planet. Like, performative white neoliberalism is yes. such a superficial fucking, like, it is the biggest fucking carry in the world, so they don't have that. What I will say is... You can definitely be fatter in the Bay and be a gay dude, and it's not as big of a fucking problem. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. The International Bear Rendezvous, like, came from the Bay, and I remember, like, I was at Outfest, and I was walking around, like, in a Speedo, just swimming, and this faggot comes up to me, and it's just like, wow, you know, I just love guys with less than perfect bodies. Like, look at your confidence. And I, like... Like, bitch, I have a perfect body. <laughs> I was just like, and he's like smiling, like he just paid me the biggest compliment, and part of me wanted to cry, but then I was like, fuck, if I like beat his ass right now, like, I'm gonna go to jail, like, they're definitely waiting for me to be like the hostile, fucking like, angry black girl, like, I don't know, I was like standing at the fucking free food table, and then beat somebody <laughs> up, which I think is a cute look, but. Yeah, yeah. But, well, <laughs> well, you know, I've, I've been here for 25 years from Texas, and. And and I go to Barry from what time part of to Texas? Time. Uh, El Paso, Texas. And oh, I moved okay. To Houston, yeah. Are oh. you familiar with Texas? Just a little bit. I'm from Alabama. Like yeah. I grew up there, but like I remember the first time. Yeah, when I moved to California, I had never driven farther than Texas, and like just really driving through it for the first that's time. That's all you drive is. That's all you do in Texas is drive. It's like crazy. Drive, yeah. Like uh, yeah. So. Yeah, so I've been, but I, so I've been here for twenty five years here in L A. So it's palpable that thing that you're talking about. There's a buzz about L A. But, but I've always loved this place, and I've always found my tribe and the buzz. Um, uh, tell us about growing up in Alabama. Um, it's probably about what you would expect. <laughs> like the, <laughs> like, like the stereotype or the idea of Alabama. Yeah. Was it a small town? Or? Uh, it was when I grew up there. It was four hundred people. Okay. Yeah. I think it's probably like seven hundred now or something. Cool. It's like a township outside of a major town, but it's like I don't know. You know, like when we're younger, we spend so much time like fighting and like I don't know. Like I was just like punk and shit, and like you know, like who, we were, who were you fighting? I felt like just like I don't know, like when you're like sitting in the classroom and like you have to be in a classroom with, like, the grandsons of clan members, and mm. you're gay as fuck, and, like, it's just, it's, yeah, like, and I don't know, it just felt so different in the 90s, too. Well, actually, no, it's it's just as fucking worse today, like, but it's, like, I can go home now and not feel so, um, not at peace. Like, I feel like I, I come here, I've, like, done all, a lot of the things I wanted to do, and now when I go home, I don't feel like that interest. Well, could it be struggle. because you can come visit and then leave, as opposed to when you're growing up there, it's like, I'm stuck yeah, here, right? Like, totally, exactly, probably. I'm just, yeah. Because sometimes I do, like, it gets more and more expensive here, and I'm always like, yeah, I'm just going to, like, take over some of my dad's land in southern Alabama and grow yeah. organic watermelons and, like, date younger people. And, just, and like, then open, open the one gay punk bar. Yeah, I don't, yo, no. yeah, as, the fuck no, uh, no <laughs> way, uh-uh, this sounds We're horrible. gonna stick to farming? Like, like, I'm kind of like, well, actually my friend who's like, um, she's like this black lesbian, uh, who lived in the Bay for a while, she actually moved back to like, rural Alabama to start an art residency. And how's that going? 
Like, she's, I mean, it's, what, it's on, like, it's, like, fourth year or something? Oh, wow, like, okay. If, yeah, so it's that, I mean, there'd be something like that, but I don't, am I, am I, the, am I the much of an altruist? Is that the word, altruist? I don't know. What's the word? Is that the altruist? If it, the, yeah, whatever. Am I much of a good person? Is that? <laughs> <laughs> so, so what is your, um, your take now that you've lived here and got a sense of the Tom House what do you think of Dirk, Sharp, Mark, the kids here at the house? And was it a positive experience? It was super positive. I think it's yeah. I think it's really rad. Um, and also, it's just you know, it's nice just to see like a queer collective like work. What what is seemingly like run like a queer collective like working and like flourishing and yeah. I've, and there's a bunch of my friends now who are just like, hey, how'd you get into that residency? Like, you know, how do I gotta, like, apply? Like, oh my god, like, yeah. so, um... I don't think that there's a formal entity involved with that. It's just something that you, we do organically, right? It's organic, but we asked you to send a proposal and... What was your proposal? Well... What was my? I don't think we had to. Do that. <laughs> I did have a proposal. Wait, oh. I was like, I was like, I was gonna work on hundred boyfriends, mm -hmm. and then I asked to do a seance. Well, there you go. Yeah, <laughs> and we did the seance. It was beautiful. Yeah, that was a wonderful spirit with the seance. I loved it. It's pretty good. Wh you filmed it, and where is that going? Um, it's like this eight millimeter film. Um, that I don't, we always do that, like um, for like the happenings I have. Um, there's a film. My dance company has a film called Free Jazz, and so we yeah yeah we try we to, had it at Queer Biome yeah we featured sure, yeah, that yeah, yeah. yeah oh cool yeah um so um Gary the one that was filming he's the one that um shot Free Jazz and so he always likes to take it up and like mix it and make it cool and plus we got a bunch of a uh, sound score so cool. we got a bunch of Malcolm and we got um the bubble popping and yeah, people yeah. around it and so we we're cool. trying to make a kind of like an art film. Well, we were very happy to have you here. Yay, good. I like that. And we'll see you around, right? Yes, I love you. Mwah. Love you. Mwah. 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 Mwah.